What's up guys, Houndish here, and today it's time for the weekly reset in Destiny 2 for the 22nd of December, and the dawning continues this Christmas week. Of course, many of us have been baking gifts and grinding new quests, so we'll touch on the rewards there, as well as the Eververse store and all of that stuff. Plus, we'll take a look at our seasonal content to see if there are any unexpected quests, and we'll cover the relevant rewards, activities, the Europa cycle of content, relevant playlists, vendors, and updates from Bungie in this video. So, guys, as always, I hope you do enjoy this one, and if you do, feel free to drop us a rating down below, but otherwise, let's get into it. Jumping in, initially we are taking a look at some of the season content right here. Of course, we're very curious as to whether we're going to get a continuation of the Hawkmoon quest and the version that allows us to farm random rolls inside of the mission and things like that. Immediately upon reset, we can see uh, that the crow doesn't have anything new to say to us right here. And also, if we look on the map for the European Dead Zone and things like that, um, we're not seeing anything kind of popping up here at the reservoir. So. We'll just have to wait and see uh, as to when farmable random rolls on the Hawk Moons and additional quest stuff is going to pop off. Potentially, we'll be looking at January at this point, but I will keep you posted if anything kind of unexpected pops up this week. Here though, as we jump into the tower, of course the dawning continues for another week in the game, so just like we mentioned last week, most of the event stuff is pretty self-explanatory as we chill here in a very, very quiet tower. We can carry on making progress on all of the various pursuits for the Dawning this year, but we should bear in mind, uh, based on what Bungie said a few days ago, that the Dawning's reset will be taking place on Sunday, and essentially as far as we know the only things that that will really affect would be the weekly bounty timing as well as the powerful reward that you get for completing various different bounties for the Dawning. So bear in mind that resets on Sunday, but otherwise everything else will reset on the Tuesday. So have fun continuing on with the dawning this year. Now though, let's take a look at the Eververse store this week. Of course, just the second week of the dawning, so we do have a bunch of event stuff featured on the front page. So as always, we've got all of the stuff that you can buy for silver. If it does take your fancy, then you can preview all of that stuff right here. But we do have the Bright Dust section on the front page. So we've got the Celestia shader right there for Bright Dust, as well as the Winter Lotus shell, which you can grab for 2800 Bright Dust. We've got the Mirthmobile, which is the very, very small Dawning Sparrow that you can grab right there. Obviously, a rather curious uh, miniature looking thing. That's two and a half thousand Bright Dust. And then we've got the Amnestia S2 uh, ship right there on the front page, as well as consumable items. Then we've got the Bright Dust main section. So we've got the Baking Cookies emote. Let's take a quick look at it right here, if you haven't seen it for a little while, perhaps. Uh, we've also got the uh, Ho Ho Hum. Uh, emote right there. I think that's a new one for this year by the looks of it. Pretty interesting stuff. We've got the True North Shell, which has been available in previous events, as well as the Polar Prancer Sparrow, yet another curious dawning looking sparrow. Then we've got the Something to Say emote, as well as the High Five Multiplayer emote. We've got the Package Projection, the Celebrate Newness Transman Effect, the Snowy Entrance, and Howling Blizzard Transman Effects. Then we've got the Celestia Shader once again, as well as G uh, Gloom Strife, sorry, the Neopop Wave, and the Dawning Celebration Shaders. While we're in the tower, we may as well take a quick look at what Banshee has. We've got Arrow Scavenger and Rampage Spec. Not necessarily the most exciting, but of course, if you need any other materials and things like that, you can grab them off him right now. Moving over to the Europa director right here, though, of course, we've got that cycle of content. So in terms of the EXO challenge, we've got Simulation Safeguard up this week, which I believe is the second one in the set of challenges. That one does come with the Pinnacle Drop, of course, and then Cadmus Ridge is the Eclipse Zone for this week, so we should have a new Augment Challenge as well as a new Collectible Penguin, things I'll keep you posted on here on the channel. But we can see that the Technocrat is the featured Empire Hunt this week for both Powerful and Pinnacle gear. But also we have the Deepstone Crypt with those additional Pinnacle Drops, and we can see that Copies of Copies is the new uh, Deepstone Crypt Challenge for this week, so have fun figuring that one out if you are jumping in. Once again, Stranger Fragment quests do continue to be available, uh, even after you have unlocked all of the fragments, and of course there are six, so bear that one in mind. You don't necessarily need to continue completing them. But for Legend and Master Lost Sectors, we can see we've got Vela's Labyrinth right there for the 1250 dropping exotic legs today. And then for the 1280, uh, we've got Exodus Garden 2A, and this one is dropping exotic head armor if you're still hunting that down from Beyond Light. Otherwise, once again, the Prophecy Dungeon has returned to the game, still with a pinnacle drop right there, and according to Bungie, we're seeing bonus infamy inside of Gambit playlists again this week, so something you can potentially take advantage of there. 
Also though, Grandmaster Difficulty Nightfall Ordeals are now once again a thing, so if you want to get any of them done for the season, you can jump in. And of course, pretty challenging stuff, so have fun and good luck hunting those rewards. Otherwise, for activities though, the rest of our pinnacles and powerfuls are listed on the director across the challenges. Once again, trials will return on Friday, so that'll be Christmas Day. Certainly will be an interesting one, as well as the return of Zer. And once again, until Bungie get a fix, they have said that adept weapons are dropping from the first passage every week. That is across all characters, and then subsequent flawless passages have rewards split between drops on the 3rd, 5th, 7th, and flawless runs each week. We do also have at least three more weeks where we're going to have Adept Weapons featured as the main flawless chest drop, so some things as always to bear in mind there. We did get a couple of hotfixes in the game just last week, but Bungie do have some known issues on the log, and these are things that mainly won't be fixed until in the new year sometime, but the investigating reports that cross-gen matchmaking sometimes doesn't work correctly. Deafening Whisper sometimes isn't triggering on the Abyssal Extractors perk on Nezarek's Sin. It also no longer triggers for 5 seconds after the second kill, and all buff kills are now 2.5 seconds. This is intentional, but they failed to call it out in the recent patch notes. So bear that in mind, but also Necrotic Grip doesn't give melee energy on corrupt combatant kills. That is intentional, but the exotic will be updated to remove the text that mentions it. There are a few other weapon and perk related things. For instance, Thunderlord is currently missing its scope. Also, the surrounded perk buff doesn't linger when using the surrounded spec mod. And a couple of additional things that are affecting Ascendant challenges. So I will link Bungie's most recent update with known issues down below. But once again, bear in mind, it is probably gonna be a couple of weeks before we get any new updates to the game. Finally, for activity content though, in the Dreaming City this week, Ouroborea is the Ascendant challenge, and this one's found via Aphelion's Rest in the Strand. So if you do want the location for that Ascendant challenge this week, if you happen to be completing any Forsaken content, that'll run out as we finish the video. But for now guys, let us know if you are jumping into Destiny 2 this week. Should have a couple more videos drop in this week, but otherwise whatever you get up to, I hope you do enjoy the holiday season. It's been a funny year, so here's hoping we will have a much better new year. Between now and then though, I'll be keeping you up to date. So as always, feel free to get subscribed to the channel if you want me to keep you posted with the world of Destiny 2. But if you've enjoyed this video, a rating down below also very much helps us out. But otherwise for now, whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome week.